mistakes that you may be making on your raw vegan diet. Welcome back y'all for another video to recalibrate with Nate. And I wanna thank you for joining me on this video. I wanted to go through some mistakes that I was kind of taking note over the years that I was making when following a raw vegan diet. And before we get into that, I wanna let you know that we've got the ultimate vegan health and weight loss bundle going on right now, which is different than the last bundle. I mean, maybe if you've tuned in, you've kind of heard us talking about uh, a few you know, bundles that we're involved in, my wife and I, or maybe other content creators. This bundle, just like the other ones, are all different. They're always different. There's always different products within these bundles. This bundle is absolutely incredible. Uh, there's several doctors in this one, um, and you know, I think there's maybe like 100, over 120 different items for like 49 bucks, right? You know, it's it's totaling over 6,300 dollars. This bundle is so be sure to check that out. I'll put that link in the description down below. Be sure to check that out. It's really, really a great deal. And of course, that's why we always really like to pump these bundles because they are such a great deal. Uh, you can get so much information for such a, a, a reasonable price. I mean, an absolute steal. Some of these products are over hundred dollars. Some are two, two hundred dollars in there. So, be sure to check that out. Link in the description down below. All right. So let's get into some of these mistakes that you might be making on a raw vegan diet. The first mistake, which is kind of the easiest one to be making, is not eating enough. Um, if you know much about a raw vegan diet, maybe you've tapped in and you know been eating raw for some time now, or maybe you haven't been eating raw for some time now. Either way, raw foods aren't necessarily that calorically dense, so it's important to make sure you're eating enough. And the best way to make sure you're eating enough is to follow a plan that has been curated. That way you know that you are hitting all of your important nutrients, vitamins and minerals, your macros, you know, your proteins, your carbs, your fats, all that kind of stuff, right? And, and what better place to find a plan than one of these bundles, the Ultimate Vegan Health and Weight Loss Bundle. Be sure to check that out. You can definitely find great plans to follow, uh, some raw stuff in there where you're going to be hitting uh, your nutritional needs. But that is one big mistake that can easily be basically coming across is, you know, you could be coming across is not eating enough calories. Uh, so make sure you're eating enough and tracking Chronometer is a great app. I'll put that down below in the description box as well. Use that app just to kind of put in, plug in what you're eating to make sure that you are eating enough. That is a really, really important thing. You don't want to be under eating. Um, and it's really easy to do on a raw vegan diet if you are not mindful, right? So that is a, a big mistake. There was a point in time when I was eating um, around 1,500 calories and you know, I felt pretty good, but of course, over time, I know that's gonna catch up to me that it's not adequate enough uh, calories for for my activity level and my, my body size, my, my BM, BMR, right? So, and the BMR is basically like how many calories you need at rest. Like if you were to be laying in bed all day long, how many calories do you need to basically stay alive, right? So you wanna make sure you're getting enough calories. That is a huge, huge aspect of making sure you're doing the raw vegan diet correctly. Another mistake was not incorporating enough variety of plants. Um, it's easy to kind of be stuck in what is in season and what is maybe on sale and and kind of you build a routine of certain things that you're eating on a daily basis and it can be really easy to kind of stick with that and not really incorporate new plants. Um, you know, say like bok choys and different cabbages, mustard greens, um, you know, microgreens, right? Like certain things like this are really beneficial to us in a lot of ways because it helps build our gut flora, our healthy gut microbiome. And that's a really important thing for proper immune function and proper assimilation and uptake of some of these nutrients that we're really kind of striving for on a raw vegan diet. So making sure that you're eating enough as well as enough variety is huge. So definitely try different things. Um, in the beginning, there was times where I would find myself not feeling the best when I would eat, say, cruciferous vegetables like uh, chard and, um, you know, like the cabbages as well as, say, like uh, cauliflower or broccoli. But I just continued to eat that kind of stuff raw and 
now it doesn't bother me. So, and of course I did do a, a gut microbiome test, which I'll share in another video, my whole uh, year's worth of tracking, basically like taking the microbiome test and then you know six months later doing it again and a year later doing it again so I can see if I'm making improvements and if what I am doing is actually improving my overall diversity of, of bacteria, good healthy bacteria, right? So, but what's really important is to get these kinds of vegetables and fruits in, in little quantities and, you know, periodically be throwing those in. Don't just stick with, uh, you know, say uh, romaine and tomato and cucumber. You know, I myself did that for, for gosh, I mean, it seemed like a couple months. I was just eating the simplest salads of just romaine, tomato and cucumber. I found it really simple and easy. And of course it was pretty efficient as far as, you know, economically, like, you know, there wasn't very much money to, to be ordering or uh, buying that kind of stuff. But it's, it's important, really, really important to rotate your greens and to get other kinds of plants into your diet. So that could be a big mistake as well as not getting enough variety. Another one would be not drinking enough water on a raw vegan diet as well as, uh, you, you know, if you're tuning in or tapping into this raw vegan niche or community, sometimes it comes up that if you eat raw and lots of fruits and vegetables, you don't need to drink a lot of water. And that's, that's just not the case. It's, it's really important to drink enough water. Now, if you're drinking lots of juices, and of course, I mean, when we kind of type in chronometer, what we're eating throughout the day, it says that we're getting three quarters to a gallon of water within our food. So that's great, definitely, but we still need to drink water. So that is really huge. I personally notice a huge difference if I don't drink enough water. And the best way to go about it, I feel like, is what's really helped me is making sure that I drink a liter, right? Or a quart, 32 ounces, wherever you are in the world, you know, it's a, you know, depending on where you are, that's the, the, the amount of water that I personally try to get in before I even take my walk in the morning. Uh, we go out for like a five mile walk every morning. Sometimes we do a hike and having that water is so huge like if we don't drink that entire liter or 32 ounces before our walk i can tell the difference sometimes there's been times i haven't drank any water before the walk maybe just eat like a peach or an apple or something before we go and i can definitely feel the difference so drinking water is really really important and of course there's lots of science and statistics that we can go on about these different aspects and you know say with water man it's just we're a water-based machine this is a water-based machine you know we're made of you know, you maybe may have heard through school or, or in different studies that were made up of 70% water, right? So if that's the case, it's really important to drink a lot of water. So even though you're a raw vegan or you're striving to be a high raw vegan or you're just, you're eating more raw foods, or maybe you're just eating omnivorous and you just happen to be on this channel, welcome, I'm glad you're here, but it is really important to drink water. So it is said that, what was it? I, I read this a while back, something like, a liter of water just to breathe. Just breathing throughout your day, you use up a liter of water, right? 32 ounces of water, a quart of water, just breathing. And then another quart through just communicating and talking with, with one another. Um, and something along the lines of like, I don't know, I, I, I wanna say at least a quart, if not more for, for bodily functions, right? Like just, the organs and everything working properly. So that's three quarts of water, three liters of water. Uh, what would that be? 32, 36, 96 ounces. 96 ounces of water or three quarts of water to really operate optimally, keeping our levels up. And if you have activity in your day, maybe you exercise or you like to go cycling or, or swimming or something like that, right? Where you're really, you know, exerting a lot of energy, it's really important to drink even more water than those three quarts, right? So a gallon, um, some studies have said half your body weight in ounces per day, right? So that's kind of interesting, half your body weight in ounces per day. So that's a really big thing. Sometimes it can be easy to not drink a lot of water, especially if you're raw vegan, you're eating lots of fruits and vegetables, you're drinking maybe some juices, uh, smoothies, and you think, well, the smoothie's made with water, I'm probably getting enough water. It's still really important for us to drink enough water. So that might be a mistake you might be making. Make sure you check yourself, make sure you are drinking enough water. Another one would be 
not going to bed on time. <laughs> this can be a tricky one, right? And it's really important to, to go to bed at a decent hour. Like, really, you know, we strive to keep our alarms on at 8.05. And it can be tricky in the summertime because it stays light until almost 11 o'clock at night, you know, 10 o'clock you can still see outside. So it's, you know, can be really handy wearing one of those like eye masks, you know, to black out your, your room or maybe have some blackout curtains or something like that. But 8.05, the alarm goes off, we go get ready for bed, do our facial routine, you know, like wash our face, brush our teeth and such, and, you know, floss. This is really important. Dental hygiene is super, super important. Uh, going to bed on time is huge, you know, we, it's really easy to stay up really late. We have electricity, you know, this, this day and age, we have our, our electronic devices that we can stay on. Next thing you know, it can be really easy. You could be, it could be like 10, 30, 11 o'clock and you still haven't gone to sleep. And according to the research that I've done, it shows that, you know, we have this circadian rhythm, which is the time that we should be sleeping when the sun goes down, we wake up when the sun comes up. What's really interesting is that there are certain bodily functions that are getting attention while we sleep. So let's just pretend. I don't know the exact time or how they even can study this kind of stuff. It's really fascinating. But there's particular organs that are basically getting that attention throughout the middle of the night while you sleep. So let's just say um, you're your your liver or whatever right let's just say your liver at at midnight it's getting an hour's worth of attention to kind of you know go through and and clean up and make sure everything's working good and uh, another organ you know for a different time of the night right so you get the idea there's there's allotted hours each hour is kind of like your body goes through a whole check of all these systems so if you're not going to bed until midnight or one or two in the morning then you're kind of missing out on your body being able to repair and work on those particular sections um, optimally, right? So it just makes sense. Like we feel really good when we go to bed on time, you know, like nine o'clock, 9.30, asleep by 10 is preferable. But I mean, if you can get into bed, you know, for, for us personally, my wife and I, like we, we really like to be in bed by 8.30, read for like 20, 30 minutes and lights out at nine, right? So nine, you know, then you, know, then you can be like nine to five, right? Five o'clock, you've got your eight hours in and you're feeling pretty good. So that's a really important thing too, is to make sure that you're going to bed on time. This can be a, a thing that is touted in the raw vegan community, is that you know, you're eating such clean, delicious foods that you don't need a lot of sleep. You can get by with five hours of sleep. And this is another really interesting thing, is there's, a, there's a, a adenosine that is you know, in our brain and we have a glymphatic system what is contained in our head, right? In the lymphatic system down below in our, in our lower extremities in our body, right? So the glymphatic system and this adenosine is cleared out while we sleep. So this is a really important reason to make sure that you're getting enough sleep, you know, five, six hours a night, maybe here and there, but over time it, it's been shown that that will catch up with us, right? So. This is a really important one and of course can be kind of a touchy subject because some people just think they don't need very much sleep, but you know, studies show, right? So it's, if we want to operate optimally, it's best to go to bed on time. Another mistake would be not journaling. Uh, keeping a journal, you know, right beside your bed in the morning, you know, I've got this five minute journal um, and just kind of like write down certain things, maybe how you felt uh, the day before, of course, you'd be doing that the day before, but you wake up like, journal a little bit, like what's your intentions for the day? Maybe you're striving to be raw today and keep it raw all day long. So you just write down what would make today great to stay as a raw vegan today. I'm a raw vegan today, right? It's a really good thing. So journaling is huge. Of course, you know, different emotions you might be going through. Like if you're coming to this diet where you're eating raw fruits and vegetables, keeping it vegan, right? No animal products. There's different emotions that can come up. And sometimes it's good to really reflect on those emotions and jot them down. You might find that some days maybe you're a little irritated and you can reflect back like, why was I irritated? Did I go to bed on time? Did I not drink enough water? And of course, you know, write down how you do feel. Like if you're feeling great, you know, that's kind of nice to reflect on too. So journaling is really important just a little bit, you know, a couple minutes 
every single morning and every single night to just talk about your, you know, write down how your day is. You know, what was great today? What what did you learn today? Uh, and of course, you know, what do you, what do you want to plan for tomorrow? What would make tomorrow great? So, in affirmations, you know, affirming to yourself, you know, I am, I'm healthy, I'm safe, I'm, I'm, I'm an elite athlete, right? These certain things that we affirm to ourselves are really huge, and in that journal, that can be really positive, really powerful. Another mistake might be trying to be perfect, right? I mean, sometimes that's just kind of inherent, I feel like, in us, we, we want to be perfect. In so many different ways, we, we strive to be perfect, and really like it's tricky to be perfect and sometimes I would find myself in the beginning of adopting a raw diet I sometimes felt like okay I didn't I didn't w uh, conduct myself the proper way today as far as what I was eating and should I just have pizza or box macaroni and cheese you know and of course it would be vegan right dairy free mac and cheese or something for dinner at night and thinking because you know today was already like maybe shoddy like i didn't i didn't have my water or you know i, I didn't eat uh the, the the salad that i prepared for lunch i just had a melon and of course just thinking like ah oh, you know it's it's interesting how our minds can kind of work against us in some ways and striving for this perfection um and that's really important to to steer away from like we're not going to be perfect um we're, we're perfectly imperfect right you maybe you've heard that saying and i love that saying it's a beautiful saying but it's interesting because say you have this idea of what perfection may be. Maybe it's a certain, you know, whatever. Maybe you're running a certain amount of distance. Maybe you are going to bed perfectly on time and, and you reach this, this point where you have set yourself up like, if I was only this, then I would be perfect. Well, as soon as you get there and reach that particular goal, you're gonna have new goals that you want. So we, I don't think we ever really reach absolute perfection. So that's something to strive for, but not to get too hung up on, right? And this would be kind of leading me to my next mistake, which would be comparing ourselves to other people in their journey, right? Maybe we look into their social media accounts or watch some of their, their content and, and think, oh my gosh, this person really has it, everything dialed, like they are perfect. And, you know, we compare ourselves to them and, and that's not gonna be healthy either. Everybody's at a different stage. Everybody's going through different things. And of course, using other people's content or what maybe they put out as inspiration and motivation, that's positive, right? Especially if we're trying to be better than we, we were yesterday. And that's really the biggest thing, not comparing ourselves to other people, but comparing ourselves to who we were yesterday. Like, did we floss twice today, you know? Uh, did we brush our teeth? You know, did we drink enough water, right? These are really important things. Um, another mistake would be not getting enough exercise, not enough mindful movements. And, you know, we're doing so many things, say, on a raw vegan diet to stay as healthy as we can, to live this optimum life where we are feeding ourselves delicious, healthy foods in their raw, natural state. And we could kind of be going against our ourselves, our, our better self, I would say, by not moving, by not exercising. This is really important. Our bodies are made to move. Everything is made to move, right? So we have to move our body mindfully. Go out and get, you know, if you can, go out and walk, right? That's a really important thing. Uh, you know, if you're into exercising, exercising is great. Getting that heart rate up, maybe go out for a little light jog or cycling or do some hiking or swimming. Um, these sorts of things are, are really important. It's really important for us to get moving every single day. Um, for those of you who maybe it's hard to walk, maybe you've got some injuries and it's tricky to walk, there's other things that you can do to move your, your body. Man, walking is one of the best things to do. Just get some movement in, breathe in that fresh air. And uh, you know that's, that's something to, to really, I feel that's really, really important for us to, to keep it moving. You know, get into, get involved in something. Maybe you like rock climbing, maybe you like rowing. You can join a rowing team if you live near water, you know, kayaking. Just moving your body is so important. And, you know, we want to live optimally. That's why we are eating raw foods predominantly. And uh, that, that can be a big mistake is not exercising enough. So those would be some of the mistakes that you might be making while following a raw vegan diet. And I encourage you to just 
do the best you can. You know, I mean, you're already doing amazing if you are eating high raw or, you know, all raw, um, or just starting to incorporate more raw foods in your day-to-day -day life. That is, all of that is really good, right? That's better than eating highly processed foods and lots of animal products. Uh, so, you know, you're doing, you're doing good there. And of course, there's always, it's always nice to get a little reminder of certain things that we might be not seeing or, or paying attention to. So I hope that maybe, you know, some of these mistakes that I found myself making can help you as well to where you're like, hey, you know what? I really need to think about this. I need to drink enough water. I should probably go to bed on time. I should probably, you know, get out early tomorrow and go for my walk. These sorts of things are, are beneficial to us definitely in so many ways. So I hope you enjoy this video. Make sure you click the like if you did like this, this video. It helps the channel, right? Share it with your friends, other people who maybe, you know, would enjoy something like this. Uh, hit the bell for notifications for new uploads, um, as well as check out that Ultimate Vegan Health and Weight Loss Bundle. This is an incredible bundle. I mean, $6,300, over $6,300 worth of value for 49 bucks. Like you cannot beat that. I mean, there's so much good stuff in there. So be sure to check that out. It's only around for really like, I think it's, it's a total of 10 days. So it's not very long. Um, so make sure you check that out and, uh, you guys stay safe out there. We'll see you on the next one. Love you.